Hey everyone. So this is going to go into a deeper level of nerdy. <laughs> so uh, what I want to do is actually build a workflow that has an external uh, REST endpoint and that takes a file as an input. And then I want to do something with it. So really the idea here is, you know, with Nintex Workflow Cloud, you have ways of having your workflow start on a bunch of different events, whether there's an event that happens in Salesforce or in Box, or somebody fills out a form, schedule start, all that sort of stuff. But I, what I wanted to do is actually say, what if I wanted, or what if I had a piece of uh, like custom legacy software that I want to take an output file and I want to send it to Nintex Workflow Cloud to do some processing uh, and, and run it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this particular workflow. This workflow is using a start event called a component workflow. So this is, the connector is Nintex. The event is a component workflow, which uh, a while back used to be called an external start. And I've got two pieces of information that I'm sending up, which is I expect a file, which is a file, file data, and then a name, right? So those are the input parameters. When I go into here, I'm actually logging the name that gets passed in. And then what I'm using is some a box action here called store a file, and I'm going to store that file data into a path called temp output, and I'm using another stored file action to send, uh, store in uploads. So just a number of different ways that uh, I want to just store the, the files in different locations. So that's it. That's just really to prove that this kind of stuff works. So if I run this, well, if I run the process that actually sends the file up, what's going to happen? You go over here, oops, and you'll see under instances, here I have my workflow called Nintex Workflow External Start. When I click on it, you'll actually see that the piece of software that initiated this particular workflow sent up the word Wombat, and then it stored uh, the file in box twice, and then it logged some more information, which in this case was just a zero. So you can see that this ran and it completed, so it hopefully completed successfully. If I have a look over here in uploads, in my box account, I have uh, this file called lifx.png, and then if I go into temp output, there should be a same file there. Perfect, right? So I can click on it, and there's the little logo there. So okay, so that works. Now, what do we have to do from the other side? How do we actually instantiate this particular workflow? Well, when you publish this workflow, you'll get a screen like this. You'll see there's an OPI, open API definition, which basically means I can import this into Nintex Workflow Cloud and make it an action. Right? So that's kind of cool that I can just wrap that up. But the other important bits are over here. You've got your URL with token. You've got the type of request header that you need to send, and then the structure of the JSON packet. So in this case, uh, file data and then the name right there. So those are the important bits. So let's have a look at how we did this from the other side, which is the app that actually sent this up. So I'm going to go over here, and I'll share this with you. This is just a little bit of uh, C sharp code. So I have a class called NWC caller, and it takes a few little things. So you can see it does, uh, you, know, you can instantiate it. You can run this uh, start NWC workflow, which will actually see, put this JSON packet together and send the, the data up, and that will actually start that particular workflow. You'll notice that instead of sending the actual file in here, I'm sending something called file tokens, right, which I'm actually putting together right here. I'll show you how that's put together in a moment. So we scroll down a little bit. One of the things that we need to do when we actually talk to NWC is generate a token so for communication. So we make a call to create question mark token equals, and we get a token response. Now this is the next bit. This is where actually before you instantiate that particular workflow, you need to first send those files up to Nintex Workflow Cloud. Now remember, when you're using Nintex Workflow Cloud and you're going to be setting up some files, make sure you go up here, go into settings, go into default file storage, and make sure you create a, or a default file storage. Now I'm, in this case, I'm using Box, but you can use uh, you know, whatever other EFS, EFS system that you want. So let's go back. So we're setting up all the files. In this case, it's only going to be one file, but we're setting up all the files in here. This function handles multiple files. And then what we get back is we get tokens right here, and we're storing them in a list. So we're going to have a list of tokens. And then when we go back up to, to this over here, 
what we're doing is we're going to be calling start workflow we're passing in all those tokens creating a, a string uh, variable right there and we're passing that into the json uh, payload that gets sent up so pretty straightforward now if i look at the actual code that runs it you'll see i have a base url and i have a base token both of these are going to be used if i go back to my workflow you'll actually see that i have this url if i scroll all the way across there's that big token at the end there so that's really what you're using you see token equals that's what you're using eyjh etc you see there it is right there eyjh and so we're calling the nwc caller instantiating that we're getting a token from NWC, so that's going to allow us to communicate with it. We're going to go and send up all those files. In this case, just one, but we're going to send up all the files. And then we're going to call the start NWC workflow, and that will actually instantiate the workflow uh, and actually do whatever you design it to do. So if you have a piece of software that you want to then you know, instantiate an Nintex workflow, it's pretty straightforward if you just want to start the workflow, if you just want to pass some data in, so if I go here, I'm just hard-coded Wombat, but you can just pass in all the parameters that you want. Pretty straightforward. If you want to send up files, you can do that as well. Right? So it's a nice way for you guys to be able to you know, take a little bit of the, the data from some uh, some process that you have or some uh, piece of software that you have and send it up to Nintex Workflow Cloud so that you use Nintex Workflow Cloud for what it really is. It's a your centralized place for all your business processes. Anyway, I hope this helps. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zip up this. I'll, I'll change this around, so I'll make sure it's not pointing to my stuff here. But I will change it around, tweak it, put your own base URL, put your own token in here, uh, you know, change a few little things, like, for example, uh, you know, what the, you know, the location of your files, etc. Right? How you want to set them up is completely up to you. Uh, but I'll share this with you guys in case you, you need to do this for some you know, legacy piece of uh, processing that you need to do on-prem, you know, or anywhere else, really. This sort of call can be done from anything. You could make this call from an Azure function if you wanted to. All right, with that, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to add them to either the comments on the YouTube video or the blog post I'll have on vadimtobackman.com. Thanks for your time, everyone.